Hello, this is Peter Combs from BitEmOut.com. Today is Friday, December 30th. Hope everybody had a great Christmas. Uh, we're going to take a look at last week's newsletter and see how things went. One thing I want to mention uh, before getting going here is uh, we added a quick link on this page right here um, on, the, on the newsletter page to this page. And this is an addendum that we're going to start doing uh, as we gather things for next week's newsletter. There'll be Some of them will be posted here first. Um, you, get a, you get a jump on them during the week. Uh, there's some nice things in there coming up in this week's newsletter. So be sure to check that link. Uh, during the week, come back on you know whenever you want and check here and see if we've put anything in there that you might be interested in. It's a good idea to get a leap on things. All right, let's start with this. This was a Kangxi plate. It was a big one. It was about 14 inches wide, sold by our friends Freak over in uh, the Netherlands. It's a beautiful example. It has this one of those classic patterns: serpentine trees, overglazed blue enamels, and underglaze enamels. Underglazed blue with this uh, very nicely done, these these uh, cartouches of flowers around the rim, top quality decoration. And uh, it went for a very reasonable price, I think, $1,375. I think somebody got a great buy on it. Um, these are good sellers over there. They have about 1,500 items up at any given time. So you always check them out. We always, we always have them on the site. And uh, then there was this. This was the folding uh, notepad, basically, is what it is. They're ivory sheets. They were made for export, and uh, if you, people you know that collect Chinese card cases, they often collect these. These are much rarer. Um, these fan open, and each day of the week is marked, and you can write in pencil on it and make a note to yourself and carry it around. It's an old-fashioned notepad, and then when you're, when you're done, the day has gone by, you can just erase it. And uh, these, these are usually in terrible condition. This one was in beautiful shape. Um, it has very nice, high, very high-quality carving. There's the scene right here, and it's mounted with bronze fittings. Um, here's the pin at the bottom that allows it to fan open. And uh, well, I think it went pretty reasonably. It went for $610 U.S. or 498 pounds. Apparently, eBay doesn't have a problem if you sell ivory in, the, in, in Europe. So uh, if you're a collector, uh, there's a, always a lot of it on eBay. And then there was this uh, from uh, uh, 77 Putt out in Ohio. The silver bracelet with a jade uh, mount on it, reticulated jade. Nice example, probably early 20th century, maybe made even in the 20s. But very good quality, nice silver. It's hall it was hallmarked, as I recall, and uh, went pretty reasonably, $630. Nice big bracelet. Somebody get a good late Christmas present out of that. And uh, then we go over to this. This was the uh, Big Kung Shi Basin. Uh, it was about uh, 15 inches, 14 inches wide, uh, Femi Ver decoration with the classic Kung Shi diaper pattern around the rim, butterflies, birds, it's got everything going on. And uh, again, the, the bane of my existence when people take pictures, he had just, this guy he puts Coke cans in all of his pictures to show size. And at uh, any rate, it, it went for um, pretty reasonably, $1,149, which I think was a good buy. If you collect Kang Shi, you want to keep an eye on, on this guy. This is a, a, a seller in the UK. And then there was this, the uh, China Trade uh, fan with lacquer and the beautifully done uh, polychrome decorated uh, landscape scene with a, with a bay of water and interior scenes. And uh, these often, the faces of these figures are often little ivory plaques that have been painted. So if you see one, pick it up and see if they're not made of ivory. It makes them a bit more desirable for collectors. Uh, what was nice about this was the lacquer decoration was pristine. And uh, all of the uh, panels seem to have not been, none of them seem to be split. Often these fans crack and split open. Um, and it went, it went very reasonably, $315. Uh, somebody got a great buy, I think. You get good buys sometimes during Christmas week. Uh, they usually bring five to 700 then we had the large, if you take a look at this, it was a rather large double gourd uh, Chinese lacquer carved uh, vase, or actually technically it's a jar because it has a lid. And what was interesting, this still had the lid attached to it, which is rather unusual, but it was a good piece of carving. It had a small uh, nick, as I recall, out of the foot, but nothing, nothing too uh, uh, damaging, not too disastrous. And um, it went for $600, had 11 bids. And I think that was a, a, a nice buy if you're a lacquer collector, a nice piece of cinnabar. 
Then moving along over to the Japanese shrine, gilt lacquer shrine. This thing needed some repairs, uh, but it had the original figure, which is quite nice. And uh, it's a good it's a good Edo period example. Uh, one of the one of the this would have had two of these cranes. One he, one is present, and one is missing. You'd have to have one made up for it to send it to a good restorer. They could do it. What was nice is it went very reasonably. It only went for a couple of hundred dollars, two hundred and forty-four dollars. Um, so somebody bought it. Basically, they got a very nice Japanese figure, and what was left of a shrine thrown in with it. So you have to think of it that way. Then there was this very good 18th century uh, uh, jar, blue and white jar, uh, probably late 18th century, with an interior scene here with the figures of women, some women bowing, a man seating at a scholar's table with a what looks like a big piece of coral coming out of a vase. Nice looking piece. Um, looks like they it looks as though they shot this in their bathroom for some reason. I don't know why. Um, anyway, it went for uh, $814, which is a good price for that. Um, not too much, uh, so the seller should be happy, but they, the, uh, the buyer didn't blow a bundle on it. And we had the rank badge. I don't know if you checked this out. This is a good old rank badge, uh, 18th, uh, 19th century, possibly 18th century. Very fine silver gilt work around it. A nice vine border uh, with a foo line. It's a military badge. I'm not sure what rank it was, but uh, you can go look it up. They have books on them. And uh, but lots of lots of gradient uh, colors here in the blues all the way down to silver. So it goes from a dark blue to a light blue, a lighter blue, and sort of a silver blue. Uh, beautiful toning, nice quality, and uh, brought a good price. It brought uh, nine hundred and thirty dollars, which is pretty good for one of these. Uh, but there's always a lot of good silk on eBay. There's some good silk sellers on here, especially rank badges. Then we had this. This was a, a very good. Uh, uh, carved, uh, probably 18th century um, lacquer figure of a seated Kuan Yin, uh, but exceptional quality carving. If you look at the details down here uh, over the robes, how the folds of the robes are done, and this beautifully done lotus blossom coming up over the chest with the uh, court necklace, uh, good quality, and uh, not too much wear on the gilding. The gilding seemed to be in pretty good shape. And it, did, it did well. It brought $1,225, which uh, is almost what some bronzes bring. So uh, the, whoever carved this was a very good carver and had some losses to the fingers, as I recall. But still, a very, very desirable carving. And then we had this final example. This was also this was offered by the same seller that had the, the first piece we showed you, the Kung Shi plate. This was a nice Ming jar, uh, late Ming but good color, good dark blue, uh, coming to a light blue. <clears throat> it had an old repair in the uh, around the edge of the mouth. But had it not had that, this thing would have ended up at Sotheby's or Christie's. Uh, it ended up going here uh, quite reasonably for, uh, I think it was around $900. So somebody got a great buy on this. This is a good example. And... Uh, you want to check this, as I said, check out this seller uh, as much as you can. He always has good things. And that's it for the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. If uh, you haven't gotten the newsletter uh, yet, sign up for it. And if you're not subscribing to us here on YouTube, uh, please do. And leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And uh, check back uh, on Sunday or Saturday night if you get the newsletter notifications. And uh, if you don't get it, you can sign up right here on the newsletter page itself or on the home page. All right. Have a great week and uh, talk to you next time. Bye bye.